Welcome to the Working Family Lobby Corps Session Update Week 7. Take action! This is Communications Director David Fernandez and welcome to another edition of Working Families Lobby Corps Session Update. With only three more weeks left in the 2013 legislative session, the halls of the Capitol were buzzing with action in Week 7. The battle to stop wage theft continued outside the House chambers on Tuesday. Victims of wage theft, workers, community, and faith leaders, and Representative Rodriguez gathered to speak out against the bills that would undercut local governments from passing ordinances that help workers regain their stolen wages. Lead organizer Jeremiah Tattersall of the Alachua County Wage Theft Task Force shared remarks from victims of wage theft in his community. There's another person, Ed Spinsberg, who's a friend of mine. He's a painter in Alachua County. His wife was laid off at Macy's the same week that his employer decided that it wasn't uh, timely to pay him. He was a month late on his last paycheck and his next paycheck was a month late. They became homeless living in the streets of Gainesville because they did not have an avenue of recourse. They did not have the ability to hire a lawyer. They did not have the ability to go to the Department of Labor and wait the six to eight months to start, it takes to just start an investigation. He was homeless because of wage theft and we can do something about it in Alachua County. After the press conference, Working Families Lobby Corps activists flooded the House Judiciary Committee to speak out against the pro-wage theft bill, HB 1125, by Representative Goodson. I think to add insult to injury, this year with this legislation is under the guise of proposing a solution, it's actually making the situation worse. It won't matter whether or not the wage theft was an act of omission or an act of commission. It could be an accident, it could be a mistake, but at the end of the day, the work Workers will not be made whole under the rubric of law in this bill. There's a, this really should be named the reward wage theft bill. This, this really hurts uh, low income workers and uh, so it, it essentially makes it completely ridiculous and impractical for anybody to challenge wage theft by their employers by creating a disincentive. The pro-wage theft bill passed committee on a 12 to 6 vote. Also on Tuesday, the House State Affairs Committee voted on HB 599, the bill that would effectively change the rules and stack the deck against public sector pension plans by making them look like they're in trouble even when they're on sound financial footing. Activists and first responders spoke out on this deceptive move by legislators who want to eliminate pensions and force more workers into risky Wall Street retirement schemes. To add another piece of paper with a made up assumption rate that intentionally shows the plan to be less healthy as it is, is not going to help the policymakers that have actuaries and accountants to speak to. All it's going to do is confuse citizens and plan members that may not fully understand the financial reporting to begin with. She believed all this bill is going to do is increase the cost of the pension fund. It's another actual report we're going to, we're going to have to do that is really meaningless. On Thursday, Members of the Working Families Lobby Corps and activists from across the state came to voice their opposition to the preemption of paid sick leave ordinances. SB 726 by Senator Simmons, the Senate version of HB 655, the Tallahassee Power Grab, would specifically stop local governments from passing ordinances that would allow workers to see a doctor when they're sick. Our society is changing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's more women in the workplace, and there are dads who want to stay home with sick kids. There are dads who want to help aging parents. We need to look at those issues and to see how it could work best in the workplace. This bill passed the Senate Appropriations Committee on a 13 to 6 vote. Week 7 saw one of the biggest turnouts for the Working Families Lobby Corps this session, with dozens of activists marching up the steps of the Capitol every day to testify in committee and lobby their legislators during these important final weeks of session. From the People's Steps, Lobby Corps members share their stories. Hi, I'm Ed Contos with Unite Here, Local 362 out of Orlando, and I came up here and found out that I can make a difference we sat and we talked and we said we did not agree with things up here and it certainly shook people up. So we've got to get more of our brothers and sisters up here the next time. 
Hi, my name is Glenda Linton and I am from Fort Lauderdale, Florida with the Federation of Public Employees. This week I've been here talking to our legislators about the importance of the Medicaid expansion for our members across this great state, as well as the wage theft ordinance that's being proposed to prevent our members from being able to recoup their losses when the companies are taking their wages. I encourage every one of you to please come back to Tallahassee, even in your local state, local communities, get out and talk to your legislators. We're the ones who exercise our right to vote, to put them in office, and they need to hear from each one of us. We face so many um, hurdles in teaching our children. They come to school hungry, they come to school from broken families, they come to school not knowing where their next hot meal is going to uh, come, and yet we still teach. We teach every single day. So please do not tie teach evaluation and merit pay to student achievement. Find another way. Teachers in Florida, come to Tallahassee and talk with your senators and your representatives. They're your elected officials. They're here to work for you. So come and talk with them. Come to Tallahassee and work with Working Families Lobby Corps the best. With committee meetings winding down, all eyes turn to the House and Senate floors as issues move toward a final vote. The timing is critical. Now more than ever, you need to hold your legislators accountable and let them know where you stand on all the issues affecting working families. For tools and tips on how to take action during these important final weeks, visit our action hub at fightforflorida.com. Stand up, speak out, fight back, and stay tuned next week for another legislative update. Solidarity.